Greetings everyone! In this lesson, we will get an introduction to making particle effects. We will first get to know how to make fire with Cascade, and then we'll move on to translating the fire in the new system used to make VFX, Niagara. So without further ado, let's jump right in. To start creating our fire, let's create a new particle system with right click and particle system. We can now drop that particle asset into our scene. This is the default particle look. Open the asset to see what it looks like. In this interface, we get a viewport to preview our particle, a details panel underneath to set properties, a curve editor to tweak animated values, and an emitter list. Emitters are used to spawn particles. A particle effect is broke down into emitters to create the final result. In our case, a fire, we could create an emitter for the flames, one for smoke, and another for some flying sparks. An emitter is composed of a stack of modules. These modules are like scripts telling the particle how to behave. It runs from top to bottom, and the order in which these modules are stacked is important. So when adding modules, make sure they are placed where it makes sense. We can rename this first emitter flames, do so by doing a right click, and we can now start editing our modules. The first module in the list is named Required. In here, you can change the 3D position of the emitter, set a duration to loop the particles, but most importantly, change the material. We don't have a flame material yet, so let's take care of that. Create a new master material and change the blend mode to translucent, with a shading model set to unlit. This leaves us with the opacity and the emissive color to work with. The material will feature panning textures to mask flames and distort UVs, and creating random variations. I'm starting out with a node called Screen Align UVs. This is used to let our screen project textures. To control tiling, I'm multiplying by a scalar parameter. Next, to move our textures, I'm adding a Panner node. Change speed X and Y to set the direction in the Details panel, and use a parameter to control speed. Now I'm adding a texture sample with a Cloud texture. This serves as the moving pattern to add variation in the material, but we can add even more. Duplicate these nodes, change your Scalar parameter's name, and in the new Panner, set a different direction. We can now multiply these together. I'm multiplying again with a parameter in case I want to boost the output at that point. Next, I place the Particle Color node. This is used to change the color of our particles within Cascade. Simply get the RGB value, multiply it with the output, and this goes into the emissive color. Now for the opacity. Create a new texture sample and use an interesting grayscale image for masking. I'll put the mask into a power node and tweak the opacity with a parameter. We can now get the alpha channel of the particle color and multiply the result with the mask output. I'm now adding a depth fade used to avoid sprites clipping with other geometries. So far so good, but now we'll add more variations by using the padding textures to distort the UVs for our mask. Grab the first multiply output after the cloud textures and add a component mask with default settings. This is used to prevent errors when working with UVs. Add a clamp node to make sure the output is always within the 0 to 1 range. A add node with a parameter is used to offset my UVs if I need to. Next is a text coordinates to shape the final UVs and multiply the result to boost the effect. This goes into the UV input of our mask and we're done. Create an instance of the flame material and go back to Cascade to set it in the required module. Now it might not yet look like flames, but we'll carry on editing our modules. Next in the list is the spawn module. In the Details panel, Expand Rate. The distribution here is used to change the type of data to control the module. 
the default distribution here is a float constant, meaning a single value is used. This constant sets the number of particles spawn per second. Adding more will create thicker flames. Next, the lifetime module sets the duration of individual particles before they disappear. Here we have a different distribution called float uniform. This results in two floats used as a minimum and maximum values. Cascade allows different type of distribution to control modules, so feel free to try them out. The minimum value will be the shortest time, expressed in seconds, a particle can be displayed while the maximum is the longest time possible. Every particle spawn will now get a lifetime within this range. Next module is the initial size to control the scale of our sprites at birth. This distribution uses two vectors as minimum and maximum size. Make sure to have enough difference in values to add variation. Initial velocity is setting the speed at which particles are flying at birth. Again, two vectors with minimum and maximum values. I'm using the z-axis to make the sprites rise into the air, but I also make sure to add a bit of velocity on the y and x-axis for more variations. Next module, the color over life, will animate the color and opacity of our particle over their lifetime. The default distribution here will let you add points at which particles should change state. Each point has the same settings, which are the in value, the time at which the property will change, and the out value, the value of the new property at that time. On my first point at birth, which is zero, I want the color to be something bluish. The next point will change the color at midlife, which is 0.5. And the new color will be more of a yellowish fire. We could add even more points for more controls. Simply add an array element and set the color and time at which the new point should take effect. Collapse the color over life category and will now take care of the alpha over life to control opacity. This works exactly the same way, but instead of the RGB value, a float between 0 to 1 is used. You surely noticed the graph editor below our emitters. We can use it to visualize our points we've created in that module. Simply click the graph icon next to the desired module, and properties will now be displayed in the graph. Here I want to tweak my alpha over life only. I can hide color over life, by toggling the yellow squared button. Use the fit button in the toolbar to frame our points and we can now drag our points around for easier editing. By default, the interpolation between those points are linear, but we can switch to Bezier if you want some easing. We are getting closer on our flame look. At this point, you might want to tweak the material instance to improve on your look. These were the default modules, but we can add many more if we'd like to. For example, right-click and add a rotation rate to make the sprite rotate. I can add a size by life that will animate the size using the lifetime. Acceleration over life will simulate wind blowing on my flames. Finally, I add a last module called light to illuminate my scene with my particles. We're done with the flames and we can begin to work on our second emitter, which is the smoke. The material for that smoke is really simple, but it features a texture called a sub-UV. This texture is like a flipbook that can be animated in Cascade. One of the thing is that the shading model used has been switched to default lit. That way, lights can shade the smoke for better results. Back in Cascade, I will duplicate my flame emitter as a start for the smoke. Rename the emitter accordingly and now in required, change the material for the smoke material you'll be using. Still in the required module, go down the details panel and in the sub UV category, set the interpolation to linear blend and below, set the number of rows your texture has, both horizontal and vertical. To make the animation work for that sub UV, we need a module called sub image index. 
this uses points with lifetime, so at birth, the frame to display should be 0, and at death, the last frame to display is 64, because 8x8 eight eight rows equals 64 frames. If, however, the flame emitter is confusing you while working on the smoke, turn it off by using the checkmark icon. Alternatively, you can solo the emitter of your choice to isolate it. The toolbar has a background color property to change the viewport color. The same thing can be done with modules, the checkmark will turn them off. From there, you can go back into these modules to tweak them so you can achieve a better smoke look. We're getting there! The last emitter to take care of is used for the sparks. A very simple material again. Shading model is set to unlit. The texture is made from a radial gradient exponential and ran through a power to control gradient falloff. The result is used again with the particle color. In Cascade, you can create a new emitter for your sparks and make any changes you want. I added this emitter, a sphere module, to spawn particles in a radius instead of a single point, and an orbit module to create some turbulence. And the fire particle system in Cascade is now done, but it's not over yet. The core principles you just learned will be the foundation for the next step, which is making fire in Niagara. Niagara works pretty much the same way as Cascade, but now allows for more customization. For example, emitters can be created as an asset itself to be reused as instance in other particle systems. Also, every module can be open and customized as much as you want using blueprints. Let's now translate the fire from Cascade into Niagara. To start out, right-click and in FX, select Niagara system. You will now be prompt with a window to ask if you want to start the system with some templates. Check them out to have some examples. I'll choose system from selected emitter and in the list, I can choose any emitter template to start with. However, I will still select an empty emitter so we understand the basics. When done, hit finish. Drop the system into your scene and open it. The interface is now very different from Cascade. We still have a preview, but the emitters list is now a graph where emitters are added like nodes. Also, a timeline is at the bottom to easily animate some emitters. The orange node is an emitter. It follows the same logic as in Cascade with a module stacking approach. There are different categories here that we can add modules to. The orange labels, standing for emitters, are defining the behavior of the emitter itself. The green labels are taking care of the particles. Both has a spawn and an update. Spawn is only used to set initial values on the emitter or the particles, while update is used to animate properties that need to be calculated every frame. Event handlers is used to change particle behaviors based on other particles' data like speed, collision, or depth. The last category, render, is used to set a material or change the type of render. For example, you could use a mesh as your particles for other kind of effects. Put your flame material here. The first module I will add will tell the emitter to spawn particles. On emitter update, with the plus button, Add a spawn rate. In the details panel, set how many particles per second you want to spawn. We can now see a particle in the viewport, but nothing is moving yet. To take care of that, we can add an initial velocity. On particle spawn, add velocity. By default, we get a vector, but just like in Cascade, we can change the distribution to any types. Select the arrow at the right, and here, Search for an uniform ranged vector to get a minimum and maximum value as a velocity. This is better, but there is more initial values in the particle spawn to take care of. In here, by default, we have a lifetime as a constant that can be changed to any other distribution, of course. We can set initial color, size, and rotation. 
I will add a sphere module under particle spawn so my particles are spawned within a radius. Simulating the wind can be achieved with an acceleration force. You might eventually come across a warning and this is Niagara telling you that this module is not placed appropriately. You can fix this issue automatically or dismiss it if you know what you are doing. Better. But now, let's animate the color. Under particle update, add a color module. I will change the distribution to color from curve to have a nice gradient to work with. Points at the top are for the color and at the bottom, the alpha. Double click a point to change the value and add more points. Next, use scale color to give more brightness. However, the default color value to scale is set to initial color. To use our color module above, click the arrow and in link input, particle get color. For easier control over the scale RGB, change the type to multiply vector by float. This lets you control a single value instead of three. Lastly, under render, I'll add a light renderer, illuminating my scene. We are done with the flame emitter. Now, we can save that emitter as an asset that could be used in other particle systems. Right click and create asset from this. An arrow is now displayed top right. If you click it, you will access the now parent of the saved emitter and you can still add modules here and it will inherit to any instances used in any particle systems. The workflow here is similar to materials. Changes need to be applied and compiled before these changes can take effect. Also, you can't delete any modules in instances. For these kind of changes, you will have to do it on the parent emitter. Now the smoke emitter. Here's an alternative to creating new emitters directly in the system. I'll go in my content browser and here I will add a Niagara emitter. As a starting point, I will copy my fire emitter. To make the sub UV work here, you need to go to sprite renderer, sub UV, and here input your number of rows while making sure the sub UV blending is enabled. Now under particle update, Use a sub UV animation and set the number of frames. Make sure to add the smoke emitter to the system. Right click in an empty spot and add the smoke emitter. Working in context of other emitters will yield better results. You can play around with any modules you like and make it look the way you want. If you're interested, you can double click a module to access the underlying blueprint. You might want to tweak something in here to get exactly what you're after. We can finish this off with the spark emitter using the same techniques. Here I add a vortex force to spin my sparks around. So this wraps it up for this lesson. This was a fair bit of information so make sure to experiment a lot both using Niagara and Cascade to make really cool particle effects. So until next time, you take care and have fun.